Good morning, my name is Scott Rudlow, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Lab.com. And I'm Brittany Umar, and together we bring you Morning Call. So you're seeing green arrows around the world this morning as most world markets take a cue from the bounce back in the U.S. markets. We have Europe at five and a half year highs, the Nikkei up about 2%, and our futures looking green. So, Scott, big difference. What a difference a day makes. Yes, and it's, I feel like you know, last year the same thing happened many times when once the bears finally tried calling the top, then all of a sudden the bearish action got negated and we went back into that trend. And as far as the markets are concerned, you know, Europe is now at five and a half year highs. No bear market there, no top there yet. You know, they had a really nice controlled pullback, so, you know, it made sense for them to get there first. The Nikkei is still a little volatile, you know, but I do not think that the highs that we've seen are the highs of 2014. Just needs to absorb that huge gain from 2013. And, and the Shanghai still trying to get some footing, but, you know, I think if you accumulate that over the next year to two years, that's going to pay off at some particular time. But right now, the trade there hasn't gotten much better. So in terms of our markets, then, what were some clues that we could have picked up on around midday to start getting more bullish again? Well, there were, there were a few things we talked about looking at. Okay, we said, what type of bounce, because the futures are our pre-market, you know, would negate the power of the bears from Monday. And that would be a retracement bounce. So you go to the chart of the SPX and you'll see, first of all, you know, here's the trend that's been intact since November. Here's that accelerated trend that we've been trying to figure out. Would we break close below it and test lower prices? Didn't happen. And we came in yesterday and talked about two price levels. I said, if the bears have control, they should not be able to reclaim this spot, which was about 1823, or, you know, 1832, which was the 8 and 21 day. You know what? The bulls actually powered through there. So throughout the course of the day, if you had short in the brain, you definitely could have covered. And you actually had some time to put on some risk if you took it off on this day. You know, and you said, what type of clues could you have seen also besides that? Look at the power in the SMHs. The nuts and bolts of technology ripped to new highs, bringing the cues also through the prior day's high. And, you know, with that being said, you could even look at the bios, which, you know, engulfed the prior session. So, so all in all, you know, if you were watching the day progress, A, we shouldn't have bounced through some of those levels in the S&P. And then during that time period, you saw out of performance where risk was being taken in, in, the, in actually in the bios, in the semis, and in tech. So that could have given you some clues to switch gears. Right. There was lots of action in high beta tech. We saw Apple start to act better. And um, now on bullish statements from Tim Cook about the China mobile deal, it's gapping up. So it'll be interesting to see if it can hold that gap today. Yes, let's hold the gap, digest, and break out the highs. I personally think we talked about yesterday I'm like, I, the, that the high of the year is not in on Apple. In my 2014 report, I talked about 640. I talked about perhaps new you know, products. And you know, I think that they had a great holiday season. And I think that the, the second quarter, which typically is a little soft, could be helped by China Mobile. And then the, you know, they come out with a bigger screen. And now I'm seeing some reports about in iWatch for September, you know, it could even take it higher. But with that being said, let's not put ourselves, you know, in front of the, whatever that's saying, the foot before the horse or the horse before the carriage. Horse before the, car, horse before the cart? Something car like before that. the horse. Yeah, the cart before, cart before the, horse. the horse. So, it's early, guys. Let's, yeah, let's see if we can hold <laughs> this gap first. And if you go to the chart, you know, here it is, okay? It, it tried to push a little bit below this trend, and it did. Maybe got some people out, and if you got out, yes, it was your day that it crossed this lower pivot, reclaimed some moving averages. You take a closer look here so you could see that. And, and now it's, you know, gapping up. This first area here is 553.70. So I would think if there's a lot of power today, you know, it gaps up above this and holds it. Then you have your next resistance at, you know, 561, and then you have the prior highs, which it might take earnings to get through. But all in all, I'd like to see at least half of the gap hold today and then perhaps go higher. You know, I, I do think that things are moving well for them. You go back to this, um, you know, even monthly chart and you will see, or let's go maybe to the weekly chart, it could be even clearer that once this uh, area gets taken out, which in my humble opinion, I think it does, okay, which is 575, next real spot comes in somewhere around 640. Well, you want to talk action in high beta tech, you got to talk Tesla jumping 22% intraday after deliveries of the Model S t in the fourth quarter topped forecasts. Uh, that was a pretty nice surprise there. Yes, and I think my community was so happy because it's been out of play. You know, these high beta names, they change composure. Sometimes you have to be all in there and you can't trade anything else and sometimes like okay let me just keep like one eye on it and one eye on everything else so with that being said you look at the chart of tesla and you'll see that last year it was pretty much always on our go-to list as it stayed in this trend 
Then it started to weaken. You know, this was last quarter's earnings. You know, I think a lot of people don't take stock in earnings. If you didn't, you know, you got out of the way and it's been, you know, methodically going lower. It gave a little action and then look how messy this little area has been. Okay, which, we, which has been basically an avoid. And then you look what happened yesterday. They, I think their orders were up 20% or whatever they said there. But look at this. This is a red dog reversal, guys. You want to see what a red dog reversal is? The low here is 137.82. Yesterday was below it, put it low in a 136.67. That means if we want to reclaim this area, you could have bought Tesla with a $1.20 risk and then said, I'm going to put my stop at the low of yesterday and rode this thing for a nice gain. And even if you missed that, because I missed that entry, there was multiple entries along the way. You know, when it wound up taking out this uh, trend line here, you could have even bought it at 149 and still did well. And now, you know, you know, it's up a little bit. I think the first spot is to fill this gap here at 171. Okay, and then, you know, I, I think that there's going to be enough action there that you could buy dips and look at it on three and five minute charts that, you know, there'll be a lot to, you know, to chew on. How about Google? Continues to be an all star, made a new high at 1151 yesterday. Does any dip continue to be buyable? It seems like they are. You know, I've been kind of avoiding it, but a lot of guys in, on the, in the community in the VTF have not. And if you look here, you know, this is a nice trend. You have two different trends. Ever since last quarter's earnings, it's been trending higher. That's your, you know, more the smooth trend. And then here's your accelerated trend. Still hugging the 8-day and the 21-day. And if you've been riding this as a swing, as long as it stays above that, you haven't had to worry. There's been some trades along the way, and now it's back at highs. And again, I think in December, January, I thought this can get to 1250-ish, and I still think that's the case, and just trim and trail along the way. And Facebook looking good as well, continuing to hold that upper level and build a base above its 21-day EMA, so looking good. Yeah, and you know, yesterday in the start of the day, I wasn't sure, you know, if we would go higher or lower, mm -hmm. so I actually started shorting Facebook, but it didn't go down, so I stopped out for a loss, and I said, I'm going to move on. Now you look at the daily chart, and the daily chart looks perfectly set up again. You have this nice bull flag right in front of prior highs. You know, green bar to engulf the, the, the weakness from Monday. Still above the 21 day, which it's been, you know, pretty much riding ever since breaking above this descending trend line here after a beautiful red dog reversal at 44. So with that being said, if it starts getting above this uh, 57 or 58-ish, you know, I think that the highs will be, you know, easily surpassed above 58.96 and you will see something north of 60. All right, well, coming up, we're going to go in the trenches with some ag stocks. But for some quick commercial break, we'll be right back. I'm Mark Sperling, Director of Trading with T3 Trading Group and contributor to T3 Live. Do you trade on your own, but you wish you enjoyed the benefits of a large trading floor? With the T3 Live virtual trading floor, we deliver that experience to you on your computer. On the VTF, you can follow the long and short positions of experienced professional traders like myself, Scott Redler, and others, and listen to our live radio stations as we navigate the markets. In addition, you get the added value of a large community of sophisticated and like-minded traders. In my opinion, joining the room will be the best trading decision you will ever make. I would like to invite you to begin your membership with a seven-day free trial. To get started, visit t3live.com and click on the Virtual Trading Floor tab. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the VTF. We're back and going in the trenches with some ag stops. The group pretty much took 2013 off, but is already off to a strong start in 2014. So if you want some exposure, how about we start with the ETF first, the MOO? Yes, because a lot of people don't understand the differences between a lot of the names. But if you want to have a little exposure or extra exposure to the overall group that I do think can outperform from here, the MOO is a good way to go. You know, last year, the ags really didn't participate. They were very hit or miss, very stop and go. And maybe this time is different. So if you look at the overall chart of the MOO, you could see here that, you know, you have a nice sideways consolidation. Okay, you have the low end around 53, you know, the high end 54 and a half starting to wake up. I do think that if it were to trade above, just say 54.50 and close above it, at some point within, I don't know, within this year, we could be taking out the, actually, these are the 2012 highs. So it shows you that this high was made in 2012, hasn't seen a high the whole entire time. So with that being said, let's see if there was a trend line here. Uh, a little bit, and, you know, this is when it broke above the trend line, now it's holding. Let's go a little bit further back just to the monthly, so you can see. If you look at the monthly chart, you know, obviously this ETF has only been around for, I don't know, what is this, you know, four or five years. Well, you know, you, you do have a series, you have a, a low, a higher low, a higher low, another higher low. And, you know, here you're coming into another trend line. So, again, above this area, above this spot, you know, you can even see a move back to highs, 
and I do think that it's worthy if you're having a portfolio approach, you might as well have some you know, exposure to this ETF. Well, if we'd prefer to play some individual ag stocks, what names within the group would you say offer us the best opportunity? Well, they're, they're kind of all different. I, w I went out, I think in my 2014 report, I talked about the leader, which was CF. And if you look at the leader, you'll see that CF, you know, has been trending higher at highs well before, okay, the group. So this is where your leadership is. It's been, you know, it's a little extended from the 1821, but looks good. You know, there has been some decent setups. And right now I'm long POT because this stock has been battered and bruised you know, from where it was, and you have a lower level channel that is starting to poke its head in, and there's a huge gap to fill. So as a trade, I figured this one could be good, and I still think it could be good. And then you look at two others, AGU started to clear a, a big time you know, area resistance. So I think if you want to buy dips in AGU, I think this could trend back up to 100. You know, on the last name here, one of uh, Jill's favorites from way back when, it just had a nice potent bar, and I still th I think this, even though it's a laggard trade, could wind up filling this gap, and that's a decent percentage from here. You know, make sure it holds at least half of, of yesterday's gains. All right, let's switch some gears and do some quick hits here. We got to check in on the banks. Bank of America out with a solid report this morning and is up about 2% on it. What are we doing here, trimming and trailing? Yeah, I, I, some people might have even added pre-market when it was holding 17. Mm. You know, I rarely take stocks into earnings, but I kind of like this setup because J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo was solid yesterday. So they didn't, and they didn't do much. And everyone's like saying, oh my goodness, that bodes badly for Bank of America. But Bank of America had a nice setup. Like, you know what? I think because they didn't do anything, you know, Bank of America might respond well. And in my, in my head or in my projections on the 2014 note, I'm like, it can get to at least 19, maybe 22 or so. So I took some into the earnings. So I speculated you know, instead of options, and you know, I'm getting paid a little bit in it this morning. So with that said, you look at the chart here, there's been so much to like. We've been talking about this stock since $8, okay, and it's been just a, a nice ride for investors, and I love the fact that people have been keeping it in the drawer. I talk to people all the time on Twitter about it, and you know, it's helped get them back on track with the market. So with that being said, you know, it's opening above 17. I'd say as long as it stays above 17, stay in a decent amount. If you want to trim and trail some above 17, 10, 17, 15, okay. But again, you go to this monthly chart, which is a bit more long term, and realistically, not to be like a cheerleader, you know, this has the next big resistance is like 24. So I think this could be attainable, which almost is the easier target, and this would be if, you know, it really gets going. So make sure you stay in some, because sometimes you can trim, your, <laughs> trim and trail yourself out of, go, out of a good position, and then you never get back in. How about VMware, which continued to make new highs? Could that potentially help CRM, which also acted well yesterday? Um, yeah, uh, they're not ex obviously the different companies, but they seem to move together. And in my 2014 report, I talked about VMW breaking out above 90. And if you look here, you know it broke out above 90. Uh, and that's I think the day the report was issued, and then gave you another nice bull flag continuation trade. So some people go out and look at my eight nine stocks that I put in there and just buy a basket of them and say let them work out for the year. If you did that with this one, it's on its way. Next spot here is 100. You look at CRM. Also closed near the highs. This you know stock has started to act better. So you know a move above yesterday's high of you know 57.58. This is you know the next obstacle, and that is uh, 58.37. And Microsoft had a big engulfing day yesterday. What level would you say it needs to hold? You know I'd like to see it hold at least half. I tried this stock you know a day or so ago, and I lost money. Didn't go back to it yesterday. People were trying to point to me about the red dog reversal, and I just was too busy elsewhere. You look at this, the stock here. This is a really nice engulfing bar. You know, traded below the prior low of 34.83, came back above it. So if you were looking for an entry, that could have been it. Now, what you want to do is you want to see it. You know, hold the top end. I'd say as long as like, like let, let it try and hold above here. And if it does, then perhaps we get another trade through this little pivot to get back up to some bigger resistance. You know, not a barn burner, but if you were looking for some exposure to it, that was your spot yesterday, and then maybe for a trade above uh, 36.15. And checking in on some Chinese names, C Trip has gotten beaten up, but it looks like it's trying to hold lower support. What do you think of the of the composure of this one? I think if you didn't get caught in it, I went after it towards the end of the day. You know, it looked like there was a note of some kind of upgrade on it. Hasn't been confirmed, but anyway, the price action told me that you know maybe you could be a buyer versus level. So you know, if it were to start getting above forty one thirty, 
you know, for a trade, and sometimes you just want to look for trades, you could see, you know, a quick little cash flow move back up to the 44 area. So use that as your stop, and maybe this is your ad, and that's your little uh, room for it to move. Could even go higher, but I think, you know, decent, decent spot for, for a look. For, uh for a look. Yeah, a look. <laughs> Would you consider getting involved with Dang then? Because this one looks like it's picking up some more volume lately. You know, I did yesterday. I feel like the day before on the pressure, it tried to go up on volume. The market wasn't ready. Then yesterday with the strong market, it closed on the highs. I know this is a very speculative name, but it is in the right sector when it wants to go. And it closed on the highs with volume. You look at the chart here. You know, someone's buying it. You, you go, you look a little far back and you'll see nice little move above this area. You want to put volume in which is what I'm kind of looking at here. And, um, you know, look at these two days of volume. That's pretty big volume. So with that being said, could be on the road back to, you know, 12. And uh, maybe at some point even, even north of that. It was, this was supposed to be like the e-commerce slash Amazon of China. And it just never got going. And that was what it was supposed to be. What it is is different. And look where it was on the IPO. So with that being said, if this were really to gain some steam and, and get above 12, you know, the next real level comes in, you know, up here. And actually, there's a spot here, too. So with that being said, from this spot, I thought the risk reward was decent. Well, especially being as yesterday made such a big difference in our markets, we don't exactly know what today will bring, of course. So is the name of the game today just to stay flexible? Well, the name of the game is to, to stay flexible and, and look for opportunities. Yesterday was a time to go from, you know, short on the brain to neutral, and then as the day developed into positions. Because on Monday, I went home short the spiders. Okay, and I added to them yesterday on the open. And with that being said, I said, okay, if we get above this level, I will be done shorting the spiders. Let me look for opportunities. So if you are a member of the virtual trading floor, you would have seen the day evolve where I got along some POT, got along some Apple, got along some Dang, got along some, some uh, I don't even know exactly what I had. I took Bank of America towards the end of the day. Um, you know, but you saw a portfolio, which you could see at the bottom of this, you know, it's on the disclosure. Put, get put in place as the day developed and showed signs that you know the bullish composure is back to put some risk on now today you can see what else performs well or doesn't and maybe put back some positions if you didn't yesterday and then see what's next because you know you had some adjustment points yesterday if we hold above 1835 ish in the spx now and and digest yesterday with a with a bullish tone you know at 1848 we could be seeing new highs in the S&P, and then everyone's going to have all new decisions and choices to make. If they're underinvested, to buy more. If they've been rolling up the shorts, do they carry it, or do they you know, get rid of the opinions and just bite the bullet? All right. Well, we'll see what the day brings. Thanks so much, Scott, and thanks for watching. Happy trading. Have a great day.